Oh, I've been recording this whole time. Excellent. <laughs> Hi, my name is Julia. This is An Abundance of Books, and this is the TBR Trials. If you're new, I've been trying out a new TBR game for the past couple of months, trying to get a feel for what I like to hopefully implement something in the new year. There's a playlist down below of all of the episodes so you can catch up. But today, we're going to be playing Scategories. You know it, you love it. I have this vintage bookshelf edition, which I actually found out there are a ton of other board games in this edition and like board games and books, I now need all of them. So the basic premise for categories is there's a list of prompts and you have to fulfill all of them by using one letter for each. It's meant to be played with a bunch of people and if you get the same answer as somebody else then either of you get a point for it and then the person with the most points at the end wins. Obviously it's just a little old me so we're gonna have to do something slightly different. I have the dice with all of the letters on it. I actually don't think it's all of them. Hello? I don't think it has like X or Q or any of those, but a good number here. So we roll this to figure out what letter we're doing. And then we have to use that letter to answer all of the prompts on this card. There are 12 of them. Can you see this at all? There you go. So there are 12 prompts and you just answer them. <laughs> I think this will end up working for a TBR game. My only concern is there are some prompts like a tree and you have to just name a tree and I don't think there's any answer that I could give that wouldn't just be the prompt itself. You know? Like there is no tree where the prompt wouldn't just be a book related to trees. You know? Also this has 12 options. Normally I go for around five but I do have a ton of stuff that I want to read in October. Not that I'm gonna do 12. No, definitely not. But maybe I will be able to do more than five. I don't think there are any in here that necessarily mean the prompt. Only one way to find out. How long does it want the timer to go for? Because it comes with a timer in the game, but uh... That's insufferable. I am absolutely not going to do that. It doesn't say how long the timer goes for. Hi kitty. <laughs> Did the noise of the mean timer scare you? You have to say hi. No, this is your punishment. Yeah, okay, you may go now. Okay, so I just set up my little board with the prompt card. There are, I think, 12 or 16 that come with this version. We're just doing list one for this. All right, I think we're good. Rolling, oh, I have a timer. I'm gonna do two and a half minutes. I think is fair. All right, rolling. Of course. Let's try that again. Rolling. It's an F. Ooh. And start. I'm an idiot. I have no idea how long it's been because I set my timer for two hours and 30 minutes. So it's never gonna go off. Oh, I guess I can do math. I'm almost out of time. It's fine. I got 10 out of 12. Okay, here are my answers. Number one, a boy's name. I wrote Frederick. You can tell I was immediately thinking Frederick Backman because I spelt it that way. Not that I'll necessarily do a Frederick Backman. U.S. cities, I didn't get anything. I feel like I'm opening myself up for a lot of embarrassment, but I am Canadian, so it counts. What's a Canadian city? Fredericton. Ha! I did it. My favorite fell out. My hubris. Things that are cold, a fridge, school supplies, file folder, pro sports team, the Flyers, the Philadelphia Flyers? That's a sports team, right? And it's spelt with an F and not a PH, like most of the words I wanted to write down. Insect, a fly, breakfast food. I wrote fried egg, but then crossed it out because that feels like cheating. Like I can have any form of egg. So I wrote frittata instead. Furniture, futon, TV show, Frasier. I feel like I can get a good book out of that. Things found in the ocean, fish. I tried to be more creative than that, didn't happen. Presidents, FDR, pretty proud of that one. And then product names, I could not think of one. Product names like the, 
there's just nothing. Funion rings. <laughs> I guess Funion rings, yeah. Yeah, that would work. Anyway, those are the options for our TBR. We have 10 to choose from. Some of these might be difficult. But that's the game, short and sweet. Try it for yourself. I think it's a fun and really fast way of doing a TBR. There's like no setup involved with this compared to some of the other ones I've done. I will see you once I have picked some books. I ended up having quite the time <laughs> trying to find books to fit these props. There were definitely some that I could work with, but there were things like file folder for school supplies that always sort of fell into just being about school supplies, which I was trying to avoid. But I have come up with five from this list, which I'm pretty proud of. So this isn't an excuse, but I did end up having a tough time. So what I did for the first option, Frederick, was I just picked a Frederick Backman. <laughs> I know that I love him. I know that I want to read more of him. So why not go for it? And I've picked Deal of a Lifetime and other stories. I know that Deal of a Lifetime is a Christmas one, but the other stories in it also sound interesting. It's short, it's sweet, and it's on the TBR. Next, for the word fly, I decided to use a location that I would have to fly to, that being Tokyo. <laughs> and I selected Tokyo Ever After by Amiko Jean. I have heard this pitched as the Princess Diaries in Tokyo. So I want to read that. I do. This is also giving me very Anna K vibes. It's by the same imprint. It's got a similar color. And I absolutely love that book. So I have high hopes for this one. The next word that I used was futon, and for that it made me think of the only one bed trope. And for that I will be reading Twice Shy by Sarah Hogel. I'm actually really proud of that association of things. I think it was pretty stellarly done. And if I'm not mistaken this has the one bed trope. I double checked. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure this has the only one bed trope. And that's essentially all that I know about it. I think actually it might have a... HGTV style story, yeah, a groundskeeper, very different vision for the property's future. Who knows? I read and loved Sarah Hogel's first book, You Deserve Each Other, so I have astronomical <laughs> expectations for this one. To be honest, I have already read like the first 20 pages and I soft DNF'd it. Like not for real, just because it would hurt my heart too much, but I'm scared. But I have to read it. I have to read it. I'm gonna get it over with. I'm gonna read it. The next prompt that I used was Frasier. And I was trying to think of, you know, what Frasier embodies to me is pretentious academia. <laughs> Sorry, Frasier, but it's true. You know it's true. You kind of love that you are pretentious in academia. And so, I am going to be reading The Maidens by Alex Michaelides. I'm very curious about this one considering his first work, which I feel like I'm on both sides of the fence with. Like I did really like it and I also think it was bad. How those two things can be true at the same time, don't ask me, but it makes me very curious to pick up his next book. I don't remember which college professor plotline this one follows. I think it might be the one where they're obsessed with characters who killed themselves? That might be a different book. Now that I've said it, I'm almost sure that it's a different book, but I will read The Maidens and I will let you know A, what it is about and B, how I felt about it. And then the final prompt that I used was Fish, and for that I am going to be reading The Twisted Ones by T. King Fisher. It counts. This is an author that I've been really excited about reading for a long time, and I just hope that it's good. This one also fulfills my same month, different year. This was published in October 2019. That's the end of the TBR game. The only other official thing that I have on my TBR is for the buzzword readathon. This month, the word is elements, or the category, I guess, and so you have to read something relating to earth, air, wind, fire. Nope, earth is also in there. And so for that, I have chosen Clara and the Sun by Kazuo Ishiguro. I have not read a Kazuo Ishiguro before, but he feels like he could be my perfect author and this could be my perfect book. So no pressure, but a lot of pressure.
So those are my only firm TBR plans. There are other things that I want to read, of course. I actually went through my Goodreads TBR and sorted everything by number read and made a list of those, anticipating that those will likely be part of the Goodreads Choice Awards, for which voting starts. I don't know if it's end of October or early November, but I want to be ready for it, so I'm going to try to read as many hyped things as I can. But I do also want to read some spooky stuff, and I was looking at my shelves and I noticed Book of Blood, Books of Blood, sorry, multiple books, by Clive Barker, I still have not read. This is horror short stories, I believe, or maybe just three books? It is unclear, but Goodreads wanted me to read this book really desperately, I think last year, and so a friend of mine bought me this book and I should probably read it because I want to read it. I am so curious about this. And with a name like Books of Blood, how could it not be creepy? And we've reached the end of the TBR. Thank you for playing Scategories with me. Let me know if you enjoyed it. It was definitely hard, but a very easy game to set up, very little effort on my part, which I always appreciate. If you haven't watched the other TBR games that I've been trying out, click on the buttony thing and you can watch all of them. We've got two more still to go, so I have to think of them. But that's it for me. Thank you for watching and I will see you in my next one. Bye!